One of the most important things that you have to do after a relationship with a narcissist is you must stop invalidating yourself and making yourself wrong. When you think that this has something to do with you being foolish, naive, or stupid, these types of self-devaluations were also at the foundation of what kept you in the relationship and are also what make you predisposed to these relationships in general. It is the internalization of blame, fault, guilt that holds these relationships together, obscuring the behavior of the other person. Understanding that after the fact and then perpetuating those same notions is a process of devaluation and that same devaluation is what obscured the abuse to begin with. This is the life of people pleasing and codependency that is totally related to your childhood. These are survival strategies which actually give us hope. It doesn't sound like that, but you see in an environment where you can't actually make any difference for someone else, devaluing yourself and imagining you could improve yourself or you could do a better job or you can figure out what's wrong with you and hope that this would somehow make a difference for other people is the delusion of people pleasing codependency. It is actually the basis of what can evolve into borderline personality disorder because self-devaluation runs in parallel with the idealization of a narcissist. That if you entertain their behavior as something to do with you, if you take devaluation and attempt to correct it by improving yourself or proving someone wrong, you're validating devaluation. There is no accountability or boundaries because you assume responsibility for the behavior, the welfare, the emotional states of other people. That people pleasers are compelled to try to help and fix others. They are drawn to the needs and the suffering of other people, emotionally compelled by guilt or even a sense of opportunity because they find themselves this way, that this has become their identity. People pleasers often think that they're these really good, generous, loving people, these super empathic people that can feel and sense the emotions of others and then wanna help those people. And there's one thing that is universal about people pleasing, it's failure. That the irony of people pleasing as a way to belong and fit in and be valuable to others is it leaves people pleasers feeling unrecognized without any reciprocation, acknowledgement, love or appreciation or validation. That when you people please even ordinary people, you start to recognize that maybe they don't like me, maybe they just like what I'm doing for them. And so the very things that people pleasers try to do to establish a sense of personal value causes a devaluation, subjects them to usury and non-reciprocal relationships, failing to realize that other people aren't people pleasers, that some people feel valuable for no reason, that they don't need to do the extra work. You see, but people pleasing is a compensation for an overall sense of a lack of value, that it's not enough for you to just show up in life. It's not enough for you to just accept friendship. You actually believe that you need to do more, that people will only like you if you're valuable to them. And the problem is, is that when you're trying to add value to yourself, with services, resources, help. The services, resources, and help has nothing to do with you. Those are external to yourself. You know, you're bringing a pizza to the party, watching people eat it, and it isn't 
it has nothing to do with you. That they like the pizza, sure. But you see, you feel like they should like you because of the pizza. And now you're disappointed. When the things that people pleasers do to try to get people to value them are things outside of themselves. Like people like your help, people like your money, people like your support, people like your counsel, people like you being their, their therapist and helping them with their problems. And you will feel left out because you see there's nothing you can do outside of yourself that fixes a devalued self. You see, if you're living your life perpetually creating that you are yourself not good enough, therefore you need to do things, there isn't anything that you can do or experience outside of yourself that will do anything to help yourself feel valuable. That the irony of people pleasing is it causes self devaluation. It's actually an action already an acknowledgement of a self that is less than or not good enough on its own and a compensation, an inauthentic effort to essentially bribe the world to like you. And the one thing that people pleasers often fail to address is that the number one ingredient to people pleasing would be unhappy or needy people, dependence. And people pleasers find security in the interpretation of the other people's needs because they can meet those needs with things, with substance, with money, with love, with whatever, with support. They could fill the hole, but you see the hole isn't you, the hole is what you're providing. And that's the basis of codependency, is a perpetual need from the people pleaser to be valued, loved, to securitize their life. And the irony is, is that the things that people pleasers do in this effort only leads to devaluation, only leads to a lack of reciprocation, only confirms and reaffirms these notions of one's own deficiencies or inadequacies. It's as if what the people pleaser has done has cut off their own ability to experience love. They don't feel it because they're devalued, because they don't feel good enough for it, unless they do something to deserve it. And when they do something, people like that something. And it leaves the people pleaser feeling devalued, unappreciated, unrecognized. And then suddenly that, de that people pleaser who lives a life where there isn't love around them, where there isn't value, where there isn't reciprocation, they're like somebody in the desert that's been stranded for five days with no water. How valuable does water become? If I were to show up to a person whose car was broken down, stranded on some remote roadway in a desert, and they were dehydrated, and I had a gallon of water, I was ice cold, and I could tell them, you know what? I'll drive you to your hotel. How much would they pay me? What would they give in that moment on the edge of death? Would they give me their car? Would they give me their wallet? Would they give me everything in their bank account and be grateful? Probably. And I take that same person and when they get home and they rehydrate and they've got a water, water stocked in the refrigerator, total abundance, how much value does that gallon have now? 99 cents. And so in the world of scarcity, when a people pleaser has preconditioned their own deservingness, when people pleasers have obscured love and put it into the future, only going to happen if they do this, 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 and that person does that, 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 they're susceptible to love bombing. They need an extraordinary experience in order to correct all these perceived deficiencies and make them feel so accepted and wanted that they could finally open up and allow love to be experienced within themselves and imagine it came from outside of themselves when it's really actually as abundant as the water in someone's refrigerator, something you could feel on a day-to-day -day basis 
if you stop the people pleasing.